Mr. Kleber is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, General Ellison, uh, welcome back. Um, after 18 Thank years, you. I made it up on, on the top level with the chair. Oh, well, I'm, I'm so proud of myself. Uh, we, we, we lingered down on that level for, for years together. Uh, but it's good to, to, to see you here and, and uh, appreciate your, your work um, in your uh, state. Um, I, I'm, I'm always worried about having a dichotomous uh, discussion on uh, climate change and uh, because it, what it tends to do, um, it, it further, if, 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 if further can be used here, further divides uh, and, and damages our ability to, to solve uh, problems. And we do have a problem. Uh, and we should be concentrating, in, from my perspective, on how we deal uh, with this uh, issue. Uh, you know, in 2019, Phoenix had 103 days 103 days above 100 degrees. It's a fact. And we are arguing here primarily because this is argument heaven. And so, you know, we, 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 we spend a lot of money to come to Washington to argue, uh, run TV commercials to get to Washington to argue. It would be such more, much more productive if we were in here talking about, you know, how we deal with this uh, issue, um, because it's it's not a it's not a question of whether it's going to happen. It already is happening, and uh, we, we're going to have to deal with it. And uh, we, we we're going to all have to get deal with it, including uh, companies. Um, the only question is how bad it's going to to be, and 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 which areas are going to suffer the most. Uh, for many uh, companies, corporations, extreme weather events or even slight changes in regional weather patterns can affect their operating performance. This is especially true for insurance companies and also for companies that are focused on specific geographic regions. Some companies already include general disclosure about climate risk, but those Disclosures are typically vague and don't provide investors with a good sense of the scale uh, of the risk the companies face, uh, will face in climate change. What potential financial benefits uh, there to, uh, uh, are there to a company in disclosing financial and business risk? Um, and so uh, I, I, what I'm hoping, uh, uh, General Ellison, uh, is that you, you can, at least uh, push us in the direction of how companies uh, uh, can comply with ESG policies uh, and still make uh, progress and make pro a, a profit. Uh, it's not one or the other. We can make both. Well, certainly you're right, uh, Congressman. Um, in Minnesota, we don't view uh, consideration of ESG, ESG factors as um, in intention uh, with risk adjusted uh, rate of return um, priority. We see it as something that we have to do to be careful and it's not just environmental. So there are, there are also social and, and governance factors which need to be brought into consideration. Uh, you know, uh, the research we've turned up shows that a more diverse board of directors actually is consistent with a more profitable firm because we break out of this groupthink model that um, sometimes undermines uh, the ability to assess risk. So I, our experience in Minnesota, we've had a very successful state board of investment and we do, we, we uh, prize our ESG risk consideration and think it's important to how we do business. Again, we don't lock ourselves in, not every single decision is to favor some ESG fund. Uh, we're flexible, but uh, I think you're absolutely right that uh, to not look at these uh, factors uh, would be to put blindfolds on. And to uh, take a look at these factors would be to put a, a, a uh, you know, either a microscope or certainly a uh, magnifying glass on a, on a serious problem which impacts the pensioners 
who are, yes. we are responsible for. I wish I had time to have somebody answer the question about uh, whether or not uh, crisis creates innovation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.